Barr testifies in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee just hours from now. Democratic Senator Chris Coons is on that committee. He's on foreign relations. I think you're on appropriations also. You're a part of that last hearing as well. And so let me start with that, Senator. Did the attorney general lie to you in that answer? Well, John, that's one of the things I think we should explore today. He certainly wasn't fully forthcoming uh, because he did know uh, that Robert Mueller had reached out to him first in a letter, uh, second in a phone call to convey that he was uh, upset or disappointed uh, that William Barr's summary, his four page summary to Congress was creating, as he called it, public confusion, uh, that it didn't fully reflect uh, the context, substance, nature uh, of the important work of the special counsel. So one of the first questions I want to get to uh, this morning, John, is whether or not it was that letter from special counsel Mueller um, that propelled Attorney General Barr uh, to release much of this report and to commit to testifying in front of Congress. Uh, one of my thoughts is that the timing of the release of this letter uh, is quite telling. It was released yesterday on the eve of Attorney General Barr's testimony uh, and suggests that at least some on Mueller's team are very upset uh, at the ways in which this four-page summary released by Attorney General Barr weeks ago was significantly misleading about the conclusions of the special counsel's work. Does this change the questions that you plan on asking the attorney general today? Yes, it does. Uh, that first question I just suggested, did this letter from Mueller telling the attorney general that he was unhappy with the characterization of his work um, lead to him agreeing mm -hmm. to testify or to release uh, the content. There's two other things I hope to get to. As you know, John, there's lots of members of judiciary, so it's tough to predict exactly what I'll have the chance to question. But first, it's blindingly clear from Robert Mueller's report that Russia directly interfered in our 2016 presidential election. That's been the conclusion of our intelligence community for a long time. But in great detail, Robert Mueller lays out the many ways in which Russia interfered in our election. What is the president doing to protect our country for the next election from foreign interference? There are things that folks at Homeland Security or NSA or FBI are doing. But I don't believe President Trump has ever directly said this is a threat. We need to confront it and we need to invest in securing our next election. Second, if part of what Robert Mueller's report was supposed to do was to clarify uh, whether there was wrongdoing or misdeeds, there's 10 different instances detailed in Mueller's report of actions that amount to an attempt by the president to obstruct justice. One that really stood out to me was two instances when he directed White House counsel Don McGahn to fire the mm -hmm. special counsel. The only reason that didn't happen was Don McGahn refused to carry out that order. Um, to me, for the many, many months that I was trying to get a bill passed to protect the special counsel, and many Republicans said, there's no need to worry about that. Trump mm -hmm. would never do something like that. This is clear, mm -hmm. hard evidence that Trump tried to do exactly that. And the only reason we're not sitting here talking about an obstruction prosecution is that Trump's own deputies, his mm -hmm. White House counsel in this case, didn't carry out his directive. That's stunning. Well, and John, that deserves some further discussion today. Uh, I will also note the other reason we're not sitting here talking about an obstruction prosecution is because special counsel Robert Mueller explicitly says repeatedly that he does not feel that a sitting president can be indicted. Right. So, so, you know, and, and he framed his entire investigation around that fact and the report. He said, I'm not going to say he was guilty of any crime because it's inappropriate to do so because we right. can't charge him and he can't defend himself in a court of law. I do want to ask you, because you said if Robert Mueller's intention was to lay out the case for obstruction and provide the evidence, use the word if, did Robert Mueller get played here? If his intention was to make a case for obstruction, did he get played by creating the space where William Barr could come in and shape the narrative? Well, they have a, a long professional relationship. I think he trusted the attorney general uh, to represent the work of the special counsel faithfully. Um, I'll choose to be I'm thankful for the hard work of the special counsel and his team and for the evidence that's in front of us today uh, in the report that we have, uh, even with the redactions that we have. Uh, but don't to your you have point to get, about, yeah, don't you have to get Robert Mueller in front of you, though, and now ask him about this? Absolutely. That's the conclusion I was heading towards, John, is that uh, I'm now convinced that the attorney general is conceiving of himself 
as the president's lawyer, not the people's lawyer. As someone who really was trying out for the role of president's attorney by sending in an unsolicited 19-page memo attacking Robert Mueller's theory of obstruction, um, and that his conduct since becoming attorney general suggests that he thinks mm -hmm. his central role here is to defend the president and to um, make the best case he can on the evidence given him by Mueller that the president was even though there's voluminous evidence in the Mueller report that misdeeds, mm -hmm. inappropriate actions uh, did in fact take place in the White House. I want to get you one quick question on Venezuela. There's bipartisan agreement that the Maduro regime is illegitimate and should go. Uh, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State last night, said that there was a plane on the tarmac waiting to take Maduro to Cuba, but the Russians then intervened. Do you have any information on that? Um, that's as much as I know about it. Uh, Russia and Cuba have played a fairly heavy hand here in supporting the Maduro regime um, and the regional pressure um, that has been assembled uh, in no small part due to Secretary Pompeo, um, I think is an important uh, piece of this. Mm -hmm. There is strong bipartisan support uh, for what the administration is doing and for the demonstrations and protests of the Venezuelan people as they seek to restore a legitimate constitutional government in their country. My hope is that this will come to an end soon. But this is just one of many countries uh, where we see Vladimir Putin interfering uh, to prevent legitimate constitutional elections. Well, we'll be watching Venezuela very closely today. Likewise, we'll be watching you in the Senate Judiciary hearings coming up in just a couple of hours. Senator Chris Coons, thanks so much. For